What do you, how encouraging is it for your team to put together back to back, uh, complete game wins, team efforts, all that against a, a quality opponent like Tampa? Yeah, it was good. You know, I, I told the group after, obviously, with the, you know, the way our pitchers are kind of showing, uh, our heart was great, but just the, you know, the young guys coming in and, and going right after these guys, I think that's, that's what kind of stands out for me. And, and to see the conviction these guys are starting to, to get, you know, having success. Uh, I think the, the beginning of the season is always kind of testy for younger players, but, you know, they're starting to, to believe that they belong out there and it doesn't really matter who's standing in the batter's box. And if, if our young guys can pitch that way, we're going to get a lot of guys out um, and they have a ton of conviction in that. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, obviously we left a lot of guys on earlier before that, but, you know, we didn't let it affect us. We kept grinding, kept having good at bats, um, you know, kept putting guys on base and um, ended up getting the key two out hit there. Uh, and, and obviously multiple two out hits to, to give us a, a bigger lead. For Kohei, he seems a relatively um, even kill guy, but you couldn't help but notice on the broadcast it, the giant smile on his face at, at the end of the sixth inning uh, in the, when he was in the dugout after that third out. Yeah, what was no that doubt. conversation like with him um, after after that outing? Um, no, it was great. Uh, you know, I was, we, we kind of wanted him to, you know, stay under 85 today. Um, I wasn't sure after – I thought he was going pretty strong still at the end. Um, and that's the one thing that, that, that I've – you know, I'm really excited about is in, in Japan, he actually got stronger as games went on. So I think as we move through the season, there, there will be a time when he gets used to the four days rest or, you know, if it's a five day rest kind of deal and, and he can maintain his stuff. You know, I know that he gets stronger as the game goes. His split was starting to, you know, improve. You could tell he was, his command was getting better. Um, and, and that's a huge thing for obviously any starting pitcher, but uh, especially him. And I think that second inning jam, you know, getting some strikeouts. He hadn't had a ton of strikeouts, obviously, before that. And, you know, getting back-to-back -back ones um, to leave second and third with nobody out. I mean, that was that was probably the biggest, you know, three three bats in the game that kind of set the tone for the rest of it. Adolis did not seem uh, to be over overwhelmed with the cleanup spot. <laughs> no. And in fact, it worked out perfect. They walked Joey to get to him, and he did exactly what I said he was going to do. I thought was a homer. Um, to center field or right center, but um, yeah, I, I, I think the bat before was where I was. I, I saw the guy that I saw in spring training. He took a you know a, a hard slider cutter down the way, and he didn't budge on it. And I said, and I looked at Walk, and I said, okay, there he's here, he's here now. And and that's and then he ends up getting a three one pound count, stays to the middle of the field, you know, stayed short to it, didn't try to overswing, and then obviously the fourth at bat you know, he's a huge hit for us right there and just kind of obviously didn't put the game out of reach, but, you know, gave us a, a, a decent cushion um, that we desperately needed. Thanks, buddy. Okay, just these four questions for Woody, please, because we've got uh, a lot of guys tonight. Uh, let's go to Chris Halleck. Hey, Woody, um, just did you get any kind of explanation on the replay, whether it was just it, the ball didn't go over? Uh, or just that he was just out of the plate? Yeah, they, they called him out of the plate, but they, they definitely reviewed the, the home run call. Um, that was the first thing they looked at to see if it was from a boundary standpoint. Um, they said it hit the yellow line and, and came back. Uh, I haven't seen, you know, up close, you know, the, the slow-mo on it. I thought from the replay on the board that it you know, bounced off something else, but obviously they're not going to miss that. So, yeah, the explanation given to me was that it hit the yellow line, came back onto the field, and that they confirmed that he was out at home plate. Uh, Charlie Culberson has had a couple of really good back-to-back -back games. Just what is he doing at the plate? Is he just doing the same kind of things that were impressing you in spring training? Yeah, and I think today was, you know, he played small ball today. He just played baseball. He showed, you know, the, the type of baseball player he is. Um, it's not always about hitting the, you know, getting two doubles and a triple. Or, you know, he, he took a hard ground ball to right field when, you know, the whole field was shifted the other way and, you know, ends up doing a hit and run, which we don't do very often, um, you know, with Jonah Heim. You know, and he hits a, you know, kind of a weak ground ball. And it just, you know, this is something that I've told our team, like, we will get big hits at times and we will get big hits like we did today with the double and the, the triple. Um, but if we can play small ball that way, you know, with, with our guys, we can, it's, you know, it, it hurts an opposing pitcher, especially with shifts nowadays. And, you know, when you hit a ground ball that's, you know, 40 miles an hour into right field and it's a first to third you know, it's demoralizing. It really is. And it's psychological um, at that point. So those are little things that obviously Charlie brings to the table. He's able to do and a huge moment in that spot, obviously to get it first and third with nobody out. Just clarification. Uh, was that a called hit and run or did he come up with that on the fly? 
Um, I think they kind of came up with that. Uh, I'm not going to take credit for that one. Okay. Um, it is one thing I've, I've asked our hitters if they feel comfortable doing it at times. That was a guy we could actually steal off of. Um, the times were actually good enough even for Jonah to steal, but he quickened up after that, obviously, since their, our catcher decided to steal off him. All right. Thank you, Woody. Evan Grant. Hey, I was going to ask you about that second inning jam. It, it, it did seem like he really started to mix his pitches at that point, and maybe the familiarity of having faced Yasuga one time before in, in his career – maybe gave him some familiarity, but what did you see differently after those two batters? Um, I think it just maybe a little bit of relief, you know, to kind of get through that. I think every time he goes out there, it's obviously something new to him. Um, new team he's facing most likely um, new hitters. I think getting his first win out of the way is a big one for him. Um, but I, I think he just kind of settled down after that. He realized that's you know probably going to be a big moment for him. And, you know, I, I, we love the way he pitched tonight. It's exactly what we kind of, you know, challenged him to do, use all his pitches, pitch backward at times. Um, and then it allowed him, you know, at that point to use his fastball a little bit more and, you know, get guys off the barrel. That was, um, I think he didn't throw any pitch less than nine times, save for the one curveball he threw. There was, in, in your mind, that's, that's kind of the approach you want to have with this guy, right? You haven't seen that from a lot of guys. Yeah, I mean, I feel like he was a little bit fastball heavy, you know, the first couple outings. Um, and today, he, you know, makes all his pitches. And when he does that, he's good. He's, he's nasty. He's, he's tough to hit. He's tough to square up because he's his ball is moving all over the place. And he's got really good command with all of them. Um, so he can manipulate, you know, you know, uh, the strike zone quite a bit. To, it doesn't really matter who's hitting at that point. They don't know what to look for or where to look for it. So um, it's a real challenge as a hitter to, to put good wood on it. Great. Thank you. Kennedy. Um, just, I guess, one more thing on the Garcia Homer, but not Homer. I guess, did it seemed like everybody thought it went over? Did you think it went over? Because, I mean, he was kind of jogging around at first because it looked like it went over. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I mean, I thought off the bat it was in the way in the seats. Um, it actually, I thought it was further than that, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, but I, I couldn't tell. Obviously, I'm not looking at the replay. So I got to trust that they, obviously, they, they, they told me they looked at the ground rules and made sure that it, you know, is there, there are some weird things out there um, with some railings and, you know, yellow lines. And there's one thing that kind of goes over the yellow line. So, I, you know, I'm not sure exactly what it hit, but, you know, they, they promised me that they looked up all the, the ground rules and ruled that, it, you know, hit the yellow line and came back. And just, you know, kind of switching gears on Nate Lowe. I know you've said a few times, you know, you just don't think he got an opportunity when he was in Tampa and, you know, he's getting that here. Do you, do you think it kind of means something for him to come back and, Kind of he's, he broke a streak uh, in 0 for 19 yesterday. He had a couple of good hits today and all of that. Absolutely. No, I think any team, uh, you know, if, when we play Colorado, I think David Dahl's going to have the same, uh, you know, same chip on his shoulder. And I think it's a good thing. Uh, you know, obviously, the, when you play this game long enough, you're going to go from, you know, if you're lucky to play with one team your whole career, that's pretty rare. Um, so anytime a team you feel like maybe didn't give you the opportunity or, you know, you felt like could have had a better opportunity and they didn't give it to you, then of course you're going to want to, you're going to want to beat them. And it, it does mean a lot. And sometimes you put too much pressure on yourself, to be honest with you. And I, I felt like maybe that was the case in the first game. And then the last couple of games, he, he looks a lot more calm up there. Thanks, Woody. Anything else for Woody tonight? Okay, we will bring Cole.